This is the ninth video in the scripting series, and today we have a very important topic. We're gonna to be covering tables. No, not that kind, this kind. I'm going to cover both index value pairs and key value pairs, and I'll also go over a practical example at the end of this video. I'm gonna show you how you could use a table to easily track all of the zombies in your game to see how many are living and how many are dead. A table is basically a variable that can store multiple values. This is an empty table in Lua, and then this is a table with four values in it. Believe it or not, you may have used tables before. If you've used the functions get children, get descendants, or get players, then you've used tables before because all of those return tables. A table is a data structure and it can be used as an array or a dictionary. If you aren't experienced in programming, that might not mean much to you. So I'll expand on that a little bit further. A data structure is just a way to store information. It's a way to structure your information. So in this case, with this table right here, we just have basically an array or a, uh, a series of names of fruit. So this is the first name, this is the second, third, and then fourth. So this is an index value pair table. So all of these have an index that maps to a value. So this is the first item. Uh, so the index is one and the value is apple. The index is the position of the item in the table. So down here I have this kind of written out the index maps to the value. So in this case, we have a table with Apple and the it's the first thing in the table. So we have the value or the index one maps to Apple. So this is the index and then the value. So this is the first item. So it's in index one. This is the second item. So it's an in index two, third item. So it's an in index three. And then the fourth item is index four. So if we were to access these or want to access these, we would need to type the name of the table, IV table, and then the square brackets, and then the index of the item that we want to access. So for the first item and the table, that would be Apple. We would need to type one because it has the index one. And then for the second item, orange, we two, and then so on. You don't need to have everything that you want to have in your table immediately when you create it. You can actually add items later on. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So you need to type the name of the table and then the index of where you want to add something. So in this case, we'll just add something in index five and then what you want to set it equal to. And you can set it equal to whatever you want. So we'll set it equal to 100. So it's an important thing to note. Just because these are all strings does not mean uh, everything in the table needs to be a string. You can actually have numbers in there. You can have Booleans, user data such as parts, and you can also have tables even. You can have a table within your table. So now if we were to print the IV table five, so if we were to print the item at index five in this table, it would be 100. So after executing this line, this table up here looks like this. We just have one additional item in index five or position five that is equal to 100 now. Another way to insert an item would be to use some functions. So we have this table that insert. So there's actually a bunch of other functions. There's concat, create, find. I'm not gonna cover all of them in this tutorial. Um, I might cover them in a future video if people are interested, but we're gonna use insert. So insert takes a table and then a position and then a value. So that just means it takes the table that we wanna insert something into, the position of the item that we wanna insert, and then the value of the item. So we'll do insert and we'll type the table. So the table is IV table. We wanna insert something in position six or index six. And then the value of that can be whatever we want. So I'll just show you that you can have whatever you want in there. So we'll do workspace dot base plate. So now this table, uh, in addition to having this 100 here, it also has a base plate. So that's what this table looks like after executing this line and this line right here. Uh, I can delete that though, because we're obviously inserting it down here. So don't need to add it up there. Also, you don't need to have this as the very last value. You could actually change this to whatever position you want. So if we do two, now the base plate, instead of being at the end, it would be in the second position. So just shift everything. So now if we were to execute both these lines, IV table five equals 100, and this one right here, this would make the table look like this. So we'd have, you know, 100 at the added at the end, and then we would be inserting this workspace.baseplate into position two. So this is position two right here. 
So we just shift everything over. over. So this is what the table will look like after executing lines 10 and 12 now. We'd have Apple still in position one. We'd have the base plate in position two because we just inserted it into position two. And then everything else would be shifted over by one. In addition to inserting into your table, you can remove items. So if you do table dot remove, and then this takes a table and then a position that you wanna remove. So again, we put the table that we're going to uh, manipulate. So we'll do IV table and then the item that we want to remove. So if we want to remove the first item, we put one, second item, two, we'll remove the first item. So if we were to run this right here, our table after this operation would then look like this. So we delete or remove the first item and then base plate would be the first item in our table. One more really useful operation is the uh, pound sign or the hashtag. So if we were to do print pound sign and then the name of the table, so ivy table, this would get the length of the number of items inside of this table. And this works for index value pair tables. So because at this point after, you know, we started with a four, inserted a fifth, inserted a six item and then removed one item, the length of this table would be five. So we have one item, two, three, four, five. So this would print five. That pound sign right there gets the number of items in the index value pair table. Now let's talk about key value pair tables. Key value pair tables work in the same way as index value pair tables. However, instead of using the index to access the value, you use the key. So here we have a key value pair table. We have a key of name and a value of cyber creator. Then we have a key of points and a value of 20. And then we do actually have an index value pair here, but I'll talk about that last. In order to access the value of a key, you just type the name of the table dot the name of the key. So here we have key value table dot name, and this would print cyber creator. And then we have key value table, and then in brackets points, the name of the key, and this would print 20. So these are two different ways to access the values in a key value pair table. You can add and remove key value pairs in the same way as you, we did before with the index value pair table. We can use the brackets like this and add a key cash with a value of 100. This would just be like doing this, you know, cash equals 100. Um, so that's one way to do it. You can also use the insert function, remove function to remove. So it's exactly the same as an index value pair table. However, now we're using keys. So down here I have it written out, you know, we have the key maps to the value. So name maps to cyber creator points maps to 20, cash maps to 100. So all this works in the same way that uh, in the table before, one mapped to apple, two mapped to orange. The key is now used instead of the index to access the value. However, as I said before, we have this index value pair up here. So because I did not give this a key, you know, here we have name equals cyber creator, points equals 20. So that's how you do the key value pairs. You assign the key to the value like this. But if you just leave the value alone and don't assign it a key, then it is assigned an index. So this would actually receive the index one. Even though it's after all of these, these do not receive an index. This does because it has not been assigned a key. So these have keys that map to them. You know, cyber creator is mapped with name. Name maps to cyber creator. Points maps to 20. Because we did not have anything here, we did not give this a key the table automatically just assigns it to one. So now one maps to last. So if we were to come down here and print, you know, key value table one, this would print last. Another important thing to note here is that uh, like above, if we were to do this, this pound key value table, this would print the length of the table. However, this would only print one. These right here, name and points and cash, are not counted. This pound sign operator, this only counts the index value pairs. So because we only have one, which is the last value right here, this would only print one. I do want to clarify, although I did say that you can use the table.insert and the table.remove, that is just for the index value pairs. If you want to insert something into a key value pair table, then you need to do the name of the table, then the name of the key, and then the value that you want to be assigning to that key. And then if you want to remove something from a table, 
uh, then you put the name of the key right here. So for example, if we want to remove this name key, then we just do this and then set it equal to nil. So that would effectively remove it from the key value pair table. I forgot to mention this before, but you can also use an object as a key instead of one of these string like keys that are in quotations. So for example, we could do local BP equals workspace dot base plate. And then if we want to add this as a key, we put it over here and we put it in brackets like this, put the name and then we set it equal to whatever we want the value to be. So now that we have this key, which is the base plate and it's equal to false. So we could come down here and then we could print it. If we did KV table, and then instead of using the parentheses, we do just BP, this would get the value of false. So this right here would print false. Now let's finally go over the practical example. In the workspace, I have a group of zombies. I have all the models grouped together. And then in the script, I'm looping through and checking to see how many are still remaining. And then every three seconds, I'm printing the number of zombies that are still living. So up here at the top, I'm going to workspace.zombies. So that's the model of all the zombies grouped together. And then I'm getting the children. So this is what returns a table. This get children function goes inside this model and gets all of these different zombie models. It then returns a table of all of them. So this zombies variable right here is just a table of all the zombies in the game. Then I have this infinite loop, this wall true do loop right here, and it's continuously looping through every three seconds and checking to see how many zombies are living. This for loop right here is looping through all the zombies in pairs and checking to see how many have a health of greater than zero. So if you want to know how to do a for loop, be sure to check out my video on for loops. And I'm just counting each one that's alive. So I have this variable living, I'm setting it equal to zero. Then every time we encounter a zombie with health greater than zero, I add one to the living counter. After that, after this loops through all the zombies and the table, then I'm printing the number of zombies still living. So I just started the game and as you can see, it says zombies remaining five. But if I go to the workspace, go to the zombies and I'll go in and actually kill one. So I'll go here down to the game and set the zombies health to zero. Once I do that, you can see that zombie died and that says zombies remaining four. Thanks for watching. Leave any questions below in the comments, like the video if it helped you out and be sure to subscribe for more in the future.